Nessie at Hansa Park is a classic Schwarzkopf looper, and it's a pretty good one too. This was this German park's first major roller coaster, and after four decades of operation, it's arguably running better than ever. Find out why in this review. Shortly after this park was transformed from Legoland Sierksdorf to Hansa Land, it received its first major coaster in 1980. It would be a Schwarzkopf looper named Nessie Super Roller Coaster. As the name suggests, it is named after the Loch Ness Monster. For years, the only theming was a final tunnel into the monster's mouth, but the coaster received an upgrade in 2019. The ride's once bare stage was converted into an enclosed castle. It's dimly lit and very atmospheric. You have a custom soundtrack from Imascore, banners on the walls, chandeliers providing some light, and loose article bins themed as wardrobes. The only downside is that the monster tunnel was replaced by another castle. It is more cohesive, but I preferred the visual going into the beast's mouth. Nessie's paint scheme is bland, but the entire area around the attraction is lively. Nessie runs over and adjacent to pathways. Not only that, it directly interacts with a few rides. Royal Scotsman, the Vacoma family coaster, runs around Nessie and even goes through the loop. Then Nessie's helix wraps around the gigantic Highlander drop tower. Most of Hansa Park's coasters do not have the best capacities. Most of them have short trains and a handful of them only operate with one. Nessie is the exception. This is easily the park's highest capacity coaster. Each train can accommodate up to 28 guests across 7 cars. Each of those cars has 2 rows of 2. Then the ride routinely runs 2 trains with no stacking. The operators are able to check the restraints lightning fast. You are secured by just the classic minimalistic Schwarzkopf U-shaped lap bars. There are no extra seat belts or harnesses here. As for which seat you'll want, I highly recommend the back. There are two drops that hit much harder back there. Once you're dispatched, you head up the 85 foot or 26 meter tall lift hill. At the top, you navigate a slow 180 degree turn that leads into the first drop. If you're sitting in those back cars, you will get some decent floater airtime here. Next is one of those famous Schwarzkopf loops. This one is fast and very forceful. You'll experience plenty of positive G's. The train then rises up into a turnaround. The entry isn't abrupt enough to offer any airtime, and the turn is fairly tame. But the drop off this element is spectacular. You get some very strong ejector airtime in those back cars. It reminds me of the drops off the turnarounds on Shockwave at Six Flags Over Texas. That is how much power this drop has. You are whipped down it. You then zoom over a bunny hill. It looks like it should give airtime, especially because you have a considerable amount of speed, but you sadly will not leave your seat. Nessie then rises upwards, again getting no airtime, and then you navigate a 540 degree downwards helix around Highlander. The visuals of the drop tower are cool but this element is very light in the forces. But Nessie has one last trick up its sleeve. The helix leads into the shallow drop into a tunnel. There's a noticeable kink atop this drop that gives everyone a sharp pop of airtime. You then careen into the super dark tunnel. I know there are faster parts on the ride, but this part feels like it has the greatest sense of speed because of the sensory deprivation. You're then loudly and suddenly slammed to a stop. You then return to the station, ending the 2,431 foot or 741 meter long coaster. Despite this ride's age, Nessie is smooth start to finish. That's a hallmark of any Schwarzkopf that runs those lap bar trains. The biggest downside with this coaster is its pacing. I like the drops and loop, but the turns and helixes just don't do much for me. So what would I rate Nessie? I would give this coaster a 7 out of 10. This is a decent looper. If you ride in the back row, there are three good drops with the one off the second turnaround stealing the show. It is a very underrated airtime moment. Then the vertical loop is plenty of power, and then I like how the coaster interacts with a few nearby attractions. My biggest issue with this coaster are the dead spots on the turns and helixes. I know Schwarzkopf is capable of making these forceful, but it just didn't happen on Nessie. I think this is an above average Schwarzkopf looper mainly because of the drops. Interestingly, Nessie had a near clone built in Argentina at Parque de la Ciudad. This ride was a bit taller, but it had an identical layout just without the loop. Sadly, this ride is now defunct though. So those are my thoughts on Nessie at Hansa Park. 
What are your thoughts on this park's oldest operating coaster? Do you think it's a good Schwarzkopf? Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I'd appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you consider subscribing, because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.